Hey guys, Abel here, back with another video, and today I have a very cool topic to talk about, and that is my number one biggest tip to make it easier to control calories, get lean, and stay lean for big eaters. So if you feel like you have a ravenously big appetite, you're a bottomless pit, and you have a hard time controlling your calories because you just feel like you can just eat, eat, and keep on eating, then this video is for you. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is a rather specific issue. So we are sort of going to skip over some of the basics. So I'm not going to talk about things like eat more satiating whole foods, less of the very energy dense stuff. So more fruits and veggies, less rice and peanut butter, because I'm sort of assuming that you know those things, which might be a bad assumption. So I will be making more videos about that in the future. But for now, I want to talk about a more specific demographic with a more specific issue. So the issue looks something like this. The person has a massive, massive appetite. And over time, they kind of figure out how to keep that under control by eating very low calorie foods, such as non-starchy veggies, berries, lean protein sources. And that is all well and good, and they manage to get lean at times even. So for an eight to 12 week diet, that strategy works pretty well. However, this issue that they have this huge appetite and they need to eat very low calorie, very high volume foods still persists even after the diet. So let's say you're on very decent calories. You're eating 3000 calories as an 80 kilogram or 175 pound person. There are two specific problems that very commonly arise with these people. Option one is that they keep up with this strategy and they just keep eating these high volume, low calorie foods. However, in order to actually get in their calories from these foods, they constantly have to eat to the point where they just feel uncomfortably overstuffed. And then option number two is that eventually, if they make the call that, you know what, this is just unsustainable, I have to eat something that is a bit more easily digestible, but usually also is higher in calories. So eat a little bit less veggies, eat a bit more oatmeal or rice or something that is a bit easier on the stomach, then that very quickly either escalates into a binge or just spiking their calories sky high because they're used to eating these really high volume foods and that is just not very workable without spiking calories super high if you're eating foods with a higher energy density. Or option number three, of course, is that they don't spike their calories crazy high with these more easily digestible but higher calorie foods, but then they always feel like they're hungry because they can't eat the volumes of food that they're used to. So what can be done about this issue? Now, a couple of things that we have to get out of the way. The first thing is that appetite is by and large a genetic thing. It's sort of like IQ. It is influenceable by certain things, but for the most part, some people just have a larger appetite, some people just have a smaller appetite. So I myself, I've always had a big appetite, even as a six-year-old kid. I remember at family lunches and gatherings, my parents were legitimately worried about me because I could just eat such a huge amount of food. I remember I never liked being at a sleepover at a friend's place because the amount of food that their families prepared was just never enough for me. So that's me and that's always been the case. Some other people just really don't need a lot of food to feel full and satiated. My girlfriend is one good example for that. So like she just nibbles a little bit on something and she already feels full. So that is basically a genetic thing. The second thing we have to get out of the way is that the idea of reducing your appetite or training yourself to get by on less food doesn't work or it works to a very, very limited extent. Basically, you have a certain amount of appetite over the course of the day and for each meal and you have to satisfy that. If you don't, then you will be hungry. Basically, think of your appetite like a glass and then the food that you're eating, like the water that you're pouring into that glass. You have to fill that glass up and then you feel satiated. If you don't fill that glass up, you only fill it up like halfway or three quarters the way, 
you will be hungry and then it will come back to haunt you at a certain point. Now, of course, you might ask, okay, so if I always satisfy my appetite, then how am I supposed to get into an energy deficit, for example? How am I supposed to get lean? Where that's the whole concept of eating lower calorie filling foods comes in. So if you're filling these glasses up with rice cakes and peanut butter and nuts and very energy dense things, then yeah, filling that glass up i.e. satisfying your appetite will usually mean going over your caloric targets. If you fill it up with fruits, veggies, lean protein sources, things like that, then you can actually fill the glass up, so satisfy your appetite and still stay on track with your goals and stay within your caloric budget. So anyway, by now we established the fact that appetite is largely a genetic thing. We also established the fact that trying to train yourself to get by on less food and reduce your appetite doesn't really work. So what can we do? Now, I'm here to tell you that what I found over time is that this whole idea, this whole problem that you either have to overstuff yourself on low calorie foods or you have to be hungry on higher calorie foods, that is not really a problem of appetite. The real problem that these people have, and I've had this problem for a long time actually, is not that they have a large appetite, is that they over time have gotten used to slash comfortable with overstuffing themselves, eating to the point of physical discomfort, right? If we just think about this logically, if you eat an amount of food that makes you feel uncomfortable, overstuffed, you're on the couch wrapped up like, oh my goodness, I don't feel good then by definition, you didn't actually eat as much as what your appetite dictated. You actually ate past that. Okay, no matter how big your appetite is, everybody has a bliss point where, okay, I've eaten the amount of food that made me feel good and satiated. For some people, that just will mean a larger amount of food. For other people with a smaller appetite, that will mean a smaller amount of food. But everybody has that bliss point. And the bliss point is when you feel good. It's not when you feel overstuffed and just uncomfortable. So we're kind of facing a weird situation here because when you're overstuffing yourself, then you don't feel good. But a lot of people still do it. And we can accuse humans with a lot of things that they're lazy, they're seeking instant gratification, they're not disciplined enough, but the idea that they are addicted to a behavior that is making them not feel good, like that's, that's not something that humans do. So why do we still keep doing that? Now, there are a lot of potential reasons for this, and I'm not saying that what I'm about to say is the only reason for which this happens. However, with the people who have this kind of problem, and this was also true for myself, I found one really, really common pattern, and this is a very profound problem, and also a very simple problem and very simple solution at the same time, and that is distracted eating. Basically, doing something else while you're eating. In the good old days, this was eating in front of the television. These days, more commonly perhaps, probably a lot of you are doing this, eating and having your phone out and watching YouTube videos, maybe listening to a podcast. A lot of people like to bring their food to their laptops. I've done this for many, many years. Even listening to audiobooks, unfortunately, that also qualifies as distracted eating. That is a very common pattern. Now, what's the problem with distracted eating and why can this lead to this problem of regularly overstuffing yourself? Well, to really dumb it down, which I will have to do because probably there is a very, very complex neuroscience behind this whole thing and I'm not pretending to understand even half of that. But basically, what happens is your brain is this omnipotent governor that is receiving and processing all the incoming information from your meal and from the act of eating. And based on the information and these signals that the brain is receiving from your meal, it will either send you back another signal that will say, you're still hungry, you're still not satiated, keep eating, or it will give you the signal that, hey buddy, you've had enough food, put the fork down. Now, there are many little pieces of data that the brain has to process through to make that call. It's not just your stomach being full. That is one important factor here, but there is a lot of things that happen as you're eating your meal. For example, different gut hormones and peptides get released, which signal satiety. There are also visual cues, perceived intake. Is there still food left on the plate? 
what was the serving size or their leftovers around probably also nutrient sensing pathways did this meal have enough protein in it or enough salt in it or different minerals so there is many many little pieces of information that your brain has to sort through i mean it's quite amazing that the brain can actually do all of this over the course of a single dining and it's not an easy task to do. So how does this all relate to the idea of distracted eating and why that is a problem? Well, basically what you're doing is that you're throwing more shit at your brain that it has to deal with. Normally it would go, okay, this guy is eating. Let's evaluate if he had enough food or not. Okay, stomach being filled up and stretched, check. Gut hormones, satiety hormones being released, check. Hunger hormones being suppressed, check. The plate is getting emptier, check. Now that you're watching a YouTube video, your brain has to go, okay, so stomach being filled up, check. Gut hormones being released, check. Oh, this is a video, this is interesting. Let's pay attention, what's happening here? Okay, okay, where were we? Okay, so stomach being filled up, check. Gut hormones being released, check. You see, you're making it more difficult for your brain to actually detect the signals that would make it decide that you've had enough food. It's making it more difficult for your brain to realize that you've actually had enough food to feel satiated and satisfied. So that is one big problem. The other problem is that, let's face it, eating and watching or listening to something that you enjoy is awesome. That's a really nice experience. And again, I'm actually fascinated by this and I would be very interested in the actual neuroscience behind all of this, but I would hypothesize that there is some sort of synergistic pleasure response that's going on here. So I, for example, really like watching or listening to long form talks and conversations about topics that interest me, such as fitness or soccer. And I also like eating. So doing the two things together is even more pleasurable. And just as in the case of any activity that is pleasurable and fun, I'm inclined to keep doing it until it's no longer fun. And eventually every activity reaches the point where it's no longer fun, right? I mean, video games eventually become kind of boring. Your favorite TV show, once you binge watched three seasons in one sitting, kind of becomes mind numbing. Sex is no longer fun once you had an orgasm. With this particular activity, so eating and watching or listening to something at the same time, when does that become no longer fun? Well, normally the thing that you're watching or listening to would last longer than a normal meal would. So you cannot really bank on that. So the question is, when does eating become no longer fun? Well, normally it would be when you feel satisfied and satiated. But because you're distracted and your brain is less able to detect when that point comes, oftentimes, the only time when you're getting a clear signal that, okay, this is no longer fun, let's stop doing this, is when you're in actual physical discomfort and you're super overstuffed. Then the brain has no choice. It gives you a very, very clear signal that, dude, your stomach is hurting, stop eating. And this is how a lot of people end up in this situation where they overstuff themselves, albeit with fruits, veggies, low calorie stuff. So maybe they didn't even technically overeat from a caloric perspective at least, but they feel so overstuffed. They are in physical pain and they are wondering, man, how did I do this? Why did I do this? I had this thought many, many times. I was on the couch in pain and I was thinking to myself, damn it, I did it again. Like, why do I keep doing this? So what's the solution here? Well, it's actually very, very simple. Stop being distracted while you're eating. Just put your phone away. Don't bring your plate to your laptop or to the TV. Just sit down at the table, be present in the moment as you're eating, enjoy your food. And then when you're done, you will be done with it. You won't be so inclined to keep on eating past the point of comfortable satisfaction. Now, let me tell you, for me, as someone who had this problem for a very long time, and I always thought of myself as someone who is a bottomless pit, I have an insatiable appetite, and I will always have to eat kilos of food in a single meal to feel full. The first time that I tried out non-distracted eating, it was like a light suddenly being turned up. I was like, man, you can actually feel like this after a meal because I ate, and all of a sudden I reached a point where I just felt this was good. Like this was awesome. I feel really, really good. I don't need more food. It's not 
okay, I'm 80% full, I can refrain from eating even more. No, it was like legitimately, I don't want more food. And objectively, I had to realize that this is much, much less food than what I would have felt like I had to eat earlier on. So non-distracted eating for many of you who have this kind of problem is going to be a magical solution. Now, one thing that I have to disclaim here is that making that transition, putting your phone away while you eat and not bringing your plate to your laptop or TV is going to be a very, very hard transition for many of you. So much so that you might even feel like you have withdrawal symptoms. Because again, it's an awesome thing. It's very pleasurable to watch or listen to something that you really enjoy and eat at the same time. I know how cool it is. So it will be tough initially. However, once you realize just how different eating a meal feels like and how different the point of satisfaction feels like once you've had enough food, it will be an easier sell. At least I hope so. I know that this was the case for myself. At first, it just feels super weird. Like, of course, I have my food here. Of course, I'm pulling out my phone or of course, I'm bringing my laptop over here. Like, that's just what we do during a meal. But eventually, I had to realize that, man, this is just a better way to be. I feel like a normal person after meals. And also, I don't feel trapped that I either have to eat like freaking two kilograms of food in a single meal to feel full, even when I'm not dieting, or I have to be hungry, or I have to get fat because I will overdo my calories. So I strongly suggest that you're giving this a go. And you know what? The coolest thing about this is that it's for free. This is a free tool that you have access to. You need nothing fancy for it. All you need is a simple move and that is putting your phone in your pocket. If you were to try some of these super fancy, revolutionary and mega expensive appetite suppressing drugs, such as some of these GLP-1 agonists, which hopefully eventually will become widely available. And when that will be the case, it will revolutionize the fitness industry probably. What those drugs do is they agonize the release of some of these peptides and hormones that get released in response to a meal. So you feel satiated more quickly as you're eating. So basically what it does is it sends you a very clear signal earlier on into a meal that, okay, buddy, you had enough food, time to put the fork down. In a way, with mindfulness and with non-distracted eating, you're doing the same thing. You're making it more obvious to your brain that you've reached a point of satisfaction, okay? So you can either achieve that with one of these revolutionary drugs, which again, are awesome, and I'm waiting for the day when they become widely available, or you can use some of these less fancy but free tools such as non-distracted eating. Am I saying that simply not having your phone around is as effective as a GLP-1 agonist? No. However, it is easily accessible and something that is right there for you right now. So for your next meal when you're sitting down, just don't have anything around that is distracting you. And I'm really confident that it's going to serve you very well. I like to call this basically mindfulness therapy. And that is something that I like to employ with a lot of my new clients who have this kind of problem. Their issue is not that they don't know that they should be in a calorie deficit, it's that they develop a lot of these bad habits, which is making it really, really difficult for them to adhere to a calorie deficit. So I believe that this is a very powerful tool and I think this is going to be very helpful for many of you. And I, I'm fully aware that this is a type of advice that nobody likes to hear about. Everybody wants to hear something more fancy, some cool food strategy, maybe some cool appetite suppressing agent. Those are all cool things to talk about as well. However, sometimes the solution is simpler than we think. Sometimes all it takes is just hitting the button on your phone that turns the screen off. All right. So I hope this video helped. Let me know what you think. Uh, like the video if you liked it. And um, otherwise, check out the show description if you want to be coached and mentored by me or if you want to do a consultation. And uh, of course, subscribe for more content like this. Beyond that, I want to thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next video.